Hi, this presentation is going to discuss how to apply surface normals to a smooth surface, but when the surface is modeled as triangles. So the situation is the following. We've got a smooth surface, uh, which means it's got continuous derivatives, etc., and is approximated by triangles for rendering. And we would like to make sure that when it renders, it looks like a smooth surface. It doesn't look like a triangular surface or a surface with a bunch of triangular patches put together. And to do this, we're going to very heavily use averaging and lighting. So we saw some examples of this in the tent project where we had in the smooth averaged version of the tent where the colors were shaded or across the sides of a tent, the corners of the tent sort of disappeared. You could barely see there was a geometric corner there just because the color was changing gradually across the corner and there were no visual cues to let you know the corner was there. So we're going to do the same thing with triangular surfaces. So the idea is being we've got a surface with triangles and each triangle of course is flat and planar and that kind of stuff but when we render it you won't be able to see it because the colors will be changing smoothly across this and this is going to be done with fong lighting and shading. So fong lighting we'll talk in other lectures about and it means a, a way of computing lighting based on quasi-physical quasi-physical based lighting methods and shading means averaging colors uh, smoothly across the surface. Uh, you can find the stuff on surface normals I'm talking about in this lecture in the next couple lectures in section 4.3. So our goal then for fong lighting Fong lighting needs um, a lot of things. It needs material properties, it needs light properties, it needs vertex positions, it needs the viewer position, but it also needs a normal, a surface normal, and add a vertex on the surface. So the picture is, to slightly switch colors here, here I've got a vertex x, and we want to have a normal vector. A normal vector is going to be at right angles to the surface. So underlying this triangular surface, there's some idealized smooth surface, and the n is at right angles to the surface. And, and for Fong lighting, it needs to be a unit normal, length 1, a unit normal vector to the surface at x. Um, and this means, i.e., it's perpendicular to the surface. At x. Okay. So, we have several cases we're going to talk about here. We're going to have case one, we'll have a parametrically defined surface, so a parametric surface of two variables. Uh, this includes a surfaces of rotation. Um, we can have so-called level surfaces where the uh, le level set surfaces where the surface is defined by some equation and we'll also have a situation where surface without a mathematical formula which is what I want to talk about in this presentation. So a surface without a mathematical formula can come from a variety of places. Maybe you've just received a bunch of data from somebody that gives you triangles uh, that form a surface, but they don't tell you any formula for it. Maybe the data was generated by hand by an artist, or maybe someone used some sort of scanning method to actually measure a physical object and get points on the surface. And we'd like to nonetheless be able to get a reasonable approximation for a normal vector there. So we're given some surface uh, which is specified by just a set of triangles without any underlying formula. But we do know that it's supposed to be smooth. 
So although we don't know a formula for the surface, the surface is smooth, and we'd like to render it, make some reasonable assumptions about the surface, and render the surface not as a set of triangles, but as a set of, well, what looks like a smooth surface. Underlying this, it will still be triangles, but the colors will hide this from view. So the general idea would be the following. If you've got, let's just draw a two-dimensional case. Suppose I had a, a curve defined by straight line pieces. Well, this curve, uh, it's not really a curve, but you could sort of think of filling it in to make it a curve. Okay. And now we're not going to try to do all that right now. We're actually going to do much less than that. All we're going to do is try to compute the normal vectors to the curve. And the idea here would be, so n would be a, a unit normal vector. Where would we get n? Well, we could probably take the two adjacent uh, flat pieces, call that m0 and m1. We might just let n be the average of those two things. Right, so we could just approximate the slope of the curve at a vertex by taking the average of the adjacent straight line segments. So we'll do the same thing in three space. If I've got a vertex X and it's part of a triangular surface, right, so here's the vertex X here, here's a set of triangles around it, and the ith triangle has normal, has unit normal, and i. So what I mean is, of course, a triangle has three vertices. It lies in a unique plane. That plane has a slope and direction and so forth. It's got a unique vector n that's normal to the plane, and so we call that n sub i for the ith triangle. Then we can approximate the normal at x, so we're trying to find the normal vector n is going to be the approximate normal vector at x, a unit normal vector again. And we can just approximate it as an average of all the normals around it. Now averaging normals is actually slightly tricky, but as a good approximation nonetheless is to just add up and sum and hope for the best. So it's not 100% optimal, but it's like good enough in many situations. We can set n just to be the average of those things, summation over i of n i's. But this would not be a unit vector, so we then divide it by the length of that summation, or i of the n i's. And this will, except in uh, rather strange cases where the sum turns out to be zero, this will be a well-defined unit vector. and Assuming the triangles are not too huge compared to the rate of change of the surface's uh, orientation, this will give a good approximation to the normal at x. So that's actually the main thing I wanted to say, but let me just mention you can also do things, you can also use weighted averages uh, where maybe you weight a normal inversely according to the area of the triangle. So maybe small triangles, because since they represent an area close to x, have more effect on the normal at x, or your estimate for the normal at x, than a large triangle. So if we let ai be the area of the ith triangle, then another approximation would be n equals summation of i of ni over ai, and by the way, that's an i up there, and then to normalize it, we divide by the summation, that, the, the length of that quantity. So here we've taken the normals, the more heavily weighted normals among the ni's are the ones with the smallest areas, under the assumption that somehow a small area triangle uh, is mostly close to x, assuming the aspect ratios are good, and so it's a better reflection, the normal of that triangle is a better reflection of the normal of x than a large area triangle. And that's another way to do the approximation. And we'll talk in the next couple lectures about parametric surfaces and level set surfaces, but that's all for this presentation. Thank you very much.